silence. You there? See how that worked? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, podcast listener. Even if you are alone in your entrepreneurial journey, know that today, right now in your earbuds, you are joined by thousands of entrepreneurs from all around the globe seeking to grow better, more profitable, location-independent businesses. If you'd like to learn more about what we do and download our entire back catalog, check out tropicalmba.com. Yeah, buddy, happy Thursday morning. This is the Tropical MBA podcast. This one's at tropicalmba.com slash sales. We've got show notes. We've got videos of Ian crashing into stuff, all kinds of goodies there for you. Speaking of Ian, boss man joins us all the way from California. Welcome to the show. Good, sir. Let's just be clear, buddy. I'm not crashing into anybody. People will be crashing into me. We, you made that quite clear last week. We're all clear on uh, your incredible skills. Thank you. I heard this week you qualified second and then blew the engine. No, I didn't qualify anything. I didn't qualify anything. Just showed up and blew the engine. You're really testing this business model of taking taking big money into the racing industry and coming out with little money. I think you're... It's not going so well, but I'll tell you what <laughs> is going well, Dan. The other day, I stepped into a surf shop in Pacific Beach, and what did I see on the wall? My favorite pair of flip-flops. And I left this, I left this pair of flip-flops in Bangkok like two years ago. And and I found them again. So this is just like our parents' generation, like the white Reebok classics. That's what I'm doing now. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Like that's such an old dude thing to do. Is like, oh, thank God, they've got the 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 the, the style that makes my ankles feel good when I go on <laughs> long walks. Like the, the ankle support just like wasn't isn't like it was back in the late 90s and now I I'm you're, how many pairs did you buy? I got to ask the question, buddy. How many pairs did I would you have buy? bought I would have bought more. I was just lucky that they had they had my size. So like right there I threw away my old flip-flops like, you know, like we always do. It's like in the trash can outside of the establishment, you know, you throw away your old pair. You put on the new pair and you go buy your business, but I couldn't be happier about these flip flops. They're really, really nice. So there's a there's a business idea in here somewhere called oldmaninventory.com and you can buy all of your favorite stuff and send it to the old man inventory space and they just mail it to you <laughs> over the years. <laughs> right. I saw this guy. Uh, this is this is a corollary point. I saw this guy. I was at, down at the beach, and he was wearing a pair of old Reeboks, not not the classics, but they were white. But they were like twenty five years old. I'm like, how is it even possible to hold on to anything for twenty five years like that? Admirable. Let alone your shoes, man. Admirable. Did they it's just a, make them better or what? It's the California air, man. Hey, you know, I'm in Bangkok hanging out at the Conrad. Apparently, there's martial law, but I'm not really seeing much of that. No tanks on the streets yet, but hanging out at the Conrad, getting actually really psyched for the October event. So uh, planning on some uh, some fun stuff. So I've been spending the week here, and uh, I think it's a great venue, so I'm really looking forward to that. I, you know, Bangkok to me is like, it's great restaurants. It's awesome town to walk around. If you haven't visited Bangkok yet, one-way ticket, round-trip ticket, whatever you got to do, come to town, check it out. Tonglor, Ian, it's so shishi. Uh, you would, I mean, I know that you love that part of town. You can't you can't walk down the street without knocking your head into a, a fancy wine bar. It's really happening. It's a really fun place to hang out. So I've really been enjoying uh, Bangkok. Is that where Oscars is? Oscars is on Soy 11 across from the A-Loft. It's a gangster spot. It's a Dan and Ian. Nice. It's, it's part of the lore of our relationship, I'd say, hanging out at Oscars. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. It's a cool spot. <laughs> hey, Ian, this week we're going to talk about selling, maybe not the most popular or or exciting topic out there on the internet everybody wants to talk about headlines or conversion or copywriting but all this stuff boils down to selling and that's you know the the fundamental bedrock of any entrepreneurial success or of any business success so we're going to dig into some business strategies and tactics today first let's listen to some voicemails we got a call from michael hey guys michael sila here i just wanted to let you know that i finished listening to all of your podcasts in the last month (laughs) <laughs> and I'm not sure if I should feel proud or ashamed to admit that, but I guess it's clear that you two have sold me on the location independent lifestyle business movement. Wow, there have been so many things I've learned from your podcast, but I guess my biggest takeaway has been this. It takes time to start a successful business, so there's no better time to start than right now. And so I've just taken my first step on the entrepreneurial journey and that was by taking Ian's advice and getting a bartending job. And I can't wait until I build a solid runway so I can take off and join you and the listeners of this fantastic podcast in the entrepreneurial world. 
Well, I got to go make a cold call now, so I'll talk to you all later. Booyah. Michael, finally, first of all, thank you for listening to all of our episodes. That's amazing, number one, because I can only imagine how long that took you. And number two, there's a couple boners in there, so I appreciate you getting through those. Big time. And let me, t- let me say this. First off, your legacy is of making a nation full of bartenders, boss man. So there you go. Take it as take it as it lays. The second thing I couldn't be more happy with you, Michael. The second and proud. The, the second thing about this is, Michael, know that you'll be disappointed when you meet us in person. I just got to get that out there. I'm going to put that on the record. The podcast uh, is cool thing. I understand. I've been there before. When you meet us, not going to be that great. This is all edited. This is edited for your enjoyment. Real life, boring, average dudes. True story. You've heard this, right? People have come up to us and said, "I can't believe how." Uh, profoundly average you guys are you're just uh, <laughs> thank just, you uh, you're normal somewhat boring people without the help of your lovely editor arison thank you for editing. yeah there's a there's a lot of production that goes in that <laughs> hey you know I, I think look what we're hearing here from michael is this idea of not making the deal with the devil and the deal with the devil is is doing one thing in order to get another you know i'm just gonna make enough money practicing this one path and then i'm gonna trade it all in for the other someday and i think we're seeing this as a fallacy you know if you if you know artists do art entrepreneurs build enterprises and if you want to do it get to it as fast as you can and if that means having a job that gives you a lot of time like being a bartender or working night retail or something you know time is the most critical investment so that's why i think you know i I support this kind of thing i'll tell you a kind of an anecdote to see if maybe other listeners resonate with this when I look at you know this lifestyle of owning your own time, mobility, and assets is becoming more and more accessible. People are feeling it. And when I look at my friends who've watched my journey and my close associates, it's often the people that are jumping onto the path, which we think is the right long-term investment, are the people who had a little bit less to lose, right? So it's like it's the people who have the most to lose, uh, aka the, quote, great career, who are the least likely to jump onto the path. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like what Felix Dennis said in How to Get Rich. He's like, he kind of leads out this, these profiles. He's like, if you're in your early 20s and you have like a crap job, your chances of getting rich are like way more than the person who, you know, works at X consulting firm and has like all this money coming their way because they're just, they have too much to lose. They're not going to go for too it. Mu- you know? Too much to lose in terms of paper, but also too much to lose, uh, Dan, in terms of ego too. I think like, you know, if you want to like drop off the face of the earth, like and become a bartender so you can like work on your entrepreneurial venture during the day and you're like 35, like you're going to get like so many more weird looks than if you're 24. So I think if you can kind of lose the ego, you're, you're a lot better off. And I stand behind this still 100%, Dan. That is, if you can't find a job doing what you want to do in the future and your entrepreneurial ventures, then absolutely still go do a bartending thing at night and then during the day, do your thing. Uh, podcast guest Travis Jameson, once a bartender. I'm sure he was a good one too. But yeah, bootstrapped his thing off of a bartending. So there you go. There's yeah. <laughs> there's our data point. Uh, let's listen to another call we got asking about podcasts. Hey, dude. Long time listener, first time caller. Sometimes I need more Tropical MBA, but I realize you, you're, you're busy fellas. So are there any other podcasts that you listen to yourselves that you might uh, recommend? Thanks a lot, guys. Keep it up. All right, boss man. I challenge you. Read directly off the phone. Let's take – of course, we've talked about a million podcasts on the show. We're huge audio consumers. But let's just – I want you to pull off like most recently played on the podcast, just the actual ones that you're listening to now as of let's, – let's date stamp ourselves here. Thursday, May twenty second, 2014. What's on your iPhone, man? Yeah. This week, I listened to uh, Joe Rogan with Randall Carlson. Dan, I sent you this episode. It's a must listen. He talks about, well, he talks about a lot of things. He's a master philosopher and, and geologist, I would say, probably first. But anyways, give it a listen. The asteroids are coming and we might all be wiped off the earth. The ice age is coming. We might all be wiped off the earth. Be prepared. Second podcast that I listened to recently, and I don't listen to all these guys' episodes, but definitely listen to Barbell Shrugged with Joe DeSena. Joe, he runs this uh, race called the Spartan Race and the Death Race, I think it's called. And a uh, very interesting dude, man. It's uh, it's definitely l- worth a listen to hear how this guy lives in, in, the, uh, in the business that he owns. Finally, Tim Ferriss Show. I listened to the Ryan Holiday episode. That was uh, pretty good. I would recommend that. Yeah, and I would also recommend the Tim Ferriss Show with Kelly... 
star it the guy from mobility water uh, mobility water is like one of my favorite blogs uh, what a great episode tim ferris his show has been good i mean really good so props to him for coming out with the podcast and like getting together with some really sharp people I've, I, I would go as far, as far to say like half of the episodes i really enjoyed so that's one i've been listening to for me boss man this is just my current rotation it, it changes all the time the champs Thanks for getting me onto that. Like, I went deep dive on the champs, man. Like, I went back episodes. That stuff is really good. It's really funny. This week in startups, uh, I think, is the best business podcast of 2014 so far. Super engaging episodes. If you're looking for somewhere to start, check out the interview with the founder of Slack. It was just to put up last week. I mean, amazing interview. Really fascinating story. Also founded Flickr. Writers and Company. Fresh Air, Startups for the Rest of Us, This American Life, Hardcore History, Book Lust, Empire Flippers, Star- Smart Drug Smarts. The Fizzle Show is a new one I've been listening to. At first, I like wasn't that into it because it's kind of more beginner focused. But like they're not beginners. They're smart, really smart guys, and they're really funny. And their last episode about like how to say no, I thought was just funny and engaging. I was lolling. And uh, Six Pixels of Separation. That's what I got. We got another voicemail, man. Let's listen to it. Hey, Dan and Ian. Absolutely love your show. Matt Ward here with the Business and Bootstrapping Podcast. And I wanted to thank you guys for helping me transform my life while listening to your show over in Germany at an internship I hated. Recently, I talked to you, Dan, about some of your ideas with About Pages as a service and decided to launch my own. And I was just had a question for you guys. I know... You say to focus on the high end of the market, really making sure that you're having the most efficient use of your time, you're getting the biggest bang for your buck. How would you recommend marketing to this kind of customer segment? Uh, I wanted to also offer a discount to all of your listeners. If they go to businessandbootstrapping.com slash TMBA, they can get 50% off my About Page service to help with their branding of their company. And so thanks so much for what you guys do. And keep up the podcast. Absolutely love it. Yo, Matt, thanks for the call, man. Appreciate all the support you've been giving us. Like, you know, I I think the bottom line, we don't have a direct answer for you, Matt, as to like whether this is going to work. I mean, but, but instead what we wanted to do is use this as an opportunity to talk about salesmanship and and what that process looks like, what some of the key tactics that we use are. And I think that these things can help you evolve your content business or your about page business or whatever it's going to be to be a success. You know, because at the end of the day, I'll tell you this. I mean, I kind of went to that page that you mentioned on the call and I thought, well, no one's going to buy this yet, right? And we're not at that level yet. So what is it that you need to get to? It's certainly not a discount. Discounts are for wimps, Matt, right? Discounts are not going to get you a high-end audience. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. Absolutely, there's something in the direction that you're looking at here. I think the next level is to work on salesmanship. Uh, so let's talk about 20 random things about sales. Sales, is, is it's tough. It's tough to, just to make it simple, right, boss man? Because this is the meta skill. But this is what's going to get you in business. If you can sell, you're in business. That's it. That's why we got to talk about it, man. That's why we got to talk about it. Yeah. So these are just kind of 20 random thoughts. I mean, we tried to write this stuff down a couple of times, didn't we, Dan? It's just like, man, there. I mean, to talk about sales, you could go on forever and there's so many different avenues to go down. So these are just 20 random ideas that we have about sales. Pick three or four of them, implement them, go read the books that we mentioned at the end of the episode. It's worth your investment. No question. We'll call this one the towel of the sale. Number one, record your phone calls. It might be illegal. So you don't tell people you're doing it. But if you record your phone calls, <laughs> you're going to learn an incredible amount of information, especially if you can take one of your phone calls and sit down with your mentor. What's interesting about people going to roll their eyes and say, I don't want to record my phone calls. I don't want to sit down with my mentor. It's too much effort. Well, hey, this is exactly where you want to spend your effort. And the people that win, they do this kind of stuff. Exhibit A, Taylor, who can, who can, who can sell ice to Inuits at this point. Uh, records his phone calls and we sit and we peel through the details because that's where the action is. The action's in the details. You know, when I look at Matt's sales page right now, and this is power to Matt right now, there's only a few things that needs to change in order to turn that from a website that we're kind of looking at scratching our heads to a business. And it's all right here in the sales process. Yeah. Regarding, uh, 
recording your sales calls, Dan, this is like the most valuable tool that I've found in terms of like how to get better at sales and how to understand the dynamics of the conversation. So really what you're looking for is the dynamics of the conversation. What's happening with both parties? What are both people trying to say? One of my favorite things about listening to these uh, sales calls after they happen is going back and listening to the person that's getting sold to and, and listening to what he has to say, because it's not so much about what you have to say as a sales guy. It's about how you can relate to them and, and what you can take away from what they're saying, how you can, how, how you're interacting with them. Here's the bottom line, boss, man, because we've got 20 more points to get to. But if you walk away with anything from this episode, it's you learn by doing stuff and make what you do count. So go out there, try to sell any product, your product, anything, record it and sit down with someone who's better at it than you. The way you're going to improve massively. Number two, silence. You there? See how that worked? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, how does this it work? This is a great one, man. Yeah, this is a, this is a really, really important one. I think that you know this happens a lot of times when you at the end when you present a deal. So you can say, "Well, the car is forty five hundred dollars," or "I'll give you forty five hundred dollars," and it's like the first person to speak up is kind of the chump. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, Dan. <laughs> But it's like whoever chimes in first, they're the chump. So what you want to do is uh, you want to leave plenty of room for silence on both ends. It doesn't matter if you're buying or you're selling. Like Silence is uncomfortable and it makes people say dumb shit. So that's what you want to do a lot of times to, to figure out what people want, what people are trying to think about, what people are doing, is you let silence happen. And a lot of interesting things happen during that time. You're waiting for an honesty burst. Uh, <laughs> number three sell everything including where you're going to dinner and especially things that have no you have no direct benefit from selling this increases your credibility it makes you interesting it makes you useful you know don't be the person that's like like look being a good salesperson in business and in life is not being the person that's like what are you into tonight for dinner what are you into? Are you? Do you like lasagna? I mean, I know, I know a good lasagna. No, you say, look, you're a human being. Human beings love great food. You're in a city. This is a great city. You want to see a great representation of the city. I know a killer lasagna place. Will you come with me? You know, that's it. That's 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 it's being fun. fun it's credible, fun. interesting, useful. I mean, that's you know, sales is a lot more than how people present it. It's a lot more than headlines. It's a lot more than always be closing and credibility, build comfort and all this crap. I mean, you know, it's it's this it's the meta skill, right? Like it's weird because the domain of sales it creeps across, you know, all facets of, of life and business and and part of being a great salesperson is just caring enough to to want to sell something. You know, so it's like you're not being compelling in any kind of way if you're like, well, you know, are you interested in Japanese or in lasagna? Or are you interested in uh, eating a local? Screw that, man. How about you provide some value and, and say, hey, we should do this, you know? And then if, you know, if people have an objection, then you, you can address that at that moment. You know, and I think so part of sales is having something uh, worth selling. You know, Dan, for me, selling everything is, is very fun. And I think it's like a reflection in general of like knowing what you want in life. You know, so like when I try and sell lasagna on Friday night, it's because I, I think that I know what's best for the group of people that I'm with, right? And it's like having an opinion about that. It's like knowing the people that you're with and saying, hey, collectively, I think I've got this for everybody. I'm going to sell everybody on lasagna. Yeah. And if it's not a good time, then you know what? I was wrong about it, but I'm willing to go to bat again next Friday night and try and do that. And I get it, man. I even get the heebs just hearing about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, what if I'm wrong about the, what if the, you know, the, I don't get the same treatment at the lasagna place. You know, what if, you know, I don't know. I get, I get, uh, I get a little bit nervous taking you, that responsibility, you know but, 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 you know but what's take worse responsibility though? guy is the best guy. Exactly. The, because indifference sucks. It's awful. You know what I mean? It's awful, especially if you're with, in a group of people. And so, you know, selling that lasagna is not only fun, it's your responsibility, Part of what I get hung up on this and fear is like we're not talking about being right. We're talking about being a leader. And that has real value because, look, you don't know where you want to go to dinner. So if someone steps up and says, I know where you should try, that's, that's not about being right. That's about being a leader. And then you figure right. it out. So like say everybody goes there, orders the fish and gets the food poisoning. Well, next time you lead somewhere different. So it's not about being right. It's about being a leader. Number four, use anti-cells. Yeah. So I think what we mean here, Dan, is like anti-sell to me is like the niche down, right? Like it's too expensive to sell to everybody. So what you need to do is try and chop that list as small as possible. And you can do that with anti-sells. 
So you can say, you know, this hat is not for people with hair. This hat is not for people with light skin, yada, 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 yada. And then eventually you have the prototypical person that you want to buy your product. And you've done that by eliminating a lot of other different people. And then it's a lot more affordable to sell to them. Yeah. And this is also a concept of, of, of not needing to sell it. So I think if you have this idea where I'm not sure if this is right for you, it's kind of like your decision. If you get in that position, you're in a power position. Now, maybe you can't afford to be in that position, but if you can get there, that's a good position to be in. So think about that. Number five, in-person chops translate into online chops. So this is just a plea for the relevance of training up as a salesperson. A lot of times, you'll see really successful sales personalities go online, and then they'll turn their persona into this online persona. And then they'll start talking about things like headlines and conversion rates and copywriting. But the punchline, boss man, the punchline is that they're a great salesperson. So in other words, this is the fount. This is the, the beginning of where all this stuff comes from. And maybe the, the conversion is just it's correlation causation kind of thing. And, and from an anecdotal point of view, I look at you. Uh, you I don't think you've ever read a, a, a copywriting course or any of this stuff, but you're probably the the best copywriter one of the best copywriters in our entire company one of the best i mean i i would sick you on any sales page and the reason is is that you understand the sales process and i think that that's you know when we look at something like what matt's trying to do with launching a content business that's part of the reason why on the podcast we say time and time again start on the phone and then translate that relationship onto the page because if you don't understand who your customer is and how you're selling with them. And look, not all sales processes are going to be the same. If you don't understand how that's going down, it, no copywriting or headline trick or let's talk about the benefits. I mean, you know, I mean, leading with the benefits in a lot of cases isn't going to resonate for your target market because they understand the problem already. So you don't need to educate them on the problem, which is a classic copywriting trope, you know, and it just doesn't work for a lot of marketplaces. It, exactly, man. And I think, you know who uh, TJ Nelson is? Yeah. TJ went off and he wasn't sure what he was going to do and he went Often he sold cars, and uh, I think that yeah. was like probably the one of the more valuable things that he could do is because he learned how to sell when he was out there doing that. Podcast listener TJ, and the other thing Dan is, I, I think you know when I look at like a lot of these copywriters, a lot of these conversion experts, things like that. You know, it's like you get them out from underneath the desk and like get them on the phone, and a lot of them don't even know what to say. I mean, they're just so scared. All they've done is stared into their laptop their whole life, you know? But like you said, get the guy that's been selling his whole life and then get that guy online, powerhouse. It's much more difficult powerhouse. to get the guy that's been writing headlines, selling in my in most cases. And again, you don't know what their results are, except that they can sell copywriting to copywriters. So it's not clear that that stuff really works. It might be clear that, oh, if you change it, it gets 20% higher conversions, but that doesn't mean that you're getting sales into your business. So, you know, put the cart before the horse, in other words, uh, in this case. Number six, we'll call this one the leap of faith. Why not send your prospects to a third party that has no official affiliation with you? I've been looking at this uh, AppSumo ad that's been running on my Facebook, boss, man. I know you don't do the social medias, but AppSumo is linking to Noah, the founder's interview on Smart Passive Income. Which I think is cool. It's cool. It's a cool move. Like it's like, hey, like if you're not going to listen to that interview and then come back to my site, you know, on your own volition, then you're not going to be a great target market for me anyway. And I, I really like this idea of having a strong confidence and faith that people are going to remember your name and they're going to think it's cool and trust that you know, you're sending them off to a third party. It's just like association thing. And it's kind of new. We've been talking about it, Dan, trying to figure out how to how to phrase this up. You see Noah's face on there. And then you go to Pat Flynn's site and you hear about him. And it's like kind of building trust, right? And then you go back over to AppSumo, hopefully. But Noah Kagan doesn't really care if you come back to AppSumo, right? He's saying like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to put this out there. So it's kind of like a soft sell. He's like, I'm going to put this out there. You're going to end up on Pat Flynn's site. If you kind of like what you hear, like maybe make your way back to AppSumo, you you know what I mean? Maybe I'm not sure. So it's kind of this. It's kind of this like cool guy soft sell thing. Yeah, I don't know. Well, first off, it's not new. It's I disagree with some of your ideas there, but it's it's not really new, right? And it's not like he doesn't care. I think it's a good strategy, but we're on the same path. But it's it's not try hard, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he is advertising to my Facebook stream. <laughs> but, but 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 this but this does represent 
I think, a real opportunity, which is like, let's look at a very fundamental level, which is that you're getting people used to doing what you say. So if it's like, let's say, for example, like someone emails you about your product and they're like, hey, blah, 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 blah. And you have two options. One is to like move them further down your, your funnel. And another is to say, well, hey, you should go like check out this, you know. So you get those people conditioned to like trusting following your instructions and you earn that trust by instructing them to do things that don't directly benefit you. Right. So I think that, you know, if you can get people in the mode that like, hey, when when this person says what I should do, it it seems to have been appropriate like the last two or three times. So when eventually it comes around to like, well, maybe you should buy my product, then maybe that's appropriate too. number seven. What does best referencing mean, boss man? Did you put that in here? I didn't put that in there. Let's skip then to number eight, which is natural viral loop should be <laughs> in your product, which is this. If your customers won't sell your product, go back to the drawing board. Bottom line. Bottom it's getting, line. Uh, you can, it's getting you so expensive. You cannot have a business. You cannot have a business that your customers aren't selling for you. It's, it's just getting too expensive, Dan, these days to like market your product. You know, Obviously, we all market our product and we all pay for ads and all this stuff. But like, look, the best thing that you can do is have your customers sell your products for you. I mean, it's just that's that's the way going forward. And you know, word of mouth, it's, it's strong. It's been around for a long time, obviously. But that's really what I feel like, Dan, is this stuff is all getting so expensive. PPC, SEO, all this stuff. Like you have to build a brand and you have to have people talk about your products. Read Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Number nine, discounts for sales are for wimps. This whole discount thing does not appeal to the top end of the market. So that's one way you can market to the top end. You know what the worst thing in the world is, boss man? When you're having a nice dinner out at maybe like a, an associate's restaurant and you, you order the oysters and you'll, okay, you'll have the next bottle of, of Sauvignon Blanc and everything's going great. And the guy comes out, glad hands you and offers you a 20% discount. You know how that makes you feel as a high end? So there's a couple of things here, but but I just wanted to rant against this. You know, I, I, it, it did this devalu- happen to you recently? It, it devalues the whole situation, boss man. And plus, you're in under a different deal. I was here to pay retail, brother. You come out to me, it would be much better. How about you just give me a port or a vermouth after the dinner or something? Give me something that's like a gift. But don't come to me and give me twenty percent off. I'm not. This isn't freaking uh, uh, Jiffy Lube. You know what I mean? I don't feel good about that. I don't care if it's for your business or for the restaurant or whatever. I think what you're trying to say here, Dan, is that discounts tend to cheapen the deal. You know, it, it devalues your product. It's the scourge of the sales world. If it's it's like uh, it's it's cheating. It's it's cheap. It's it's the worst sales tactic there is. It's a good heuristic. If you feel compelled to be offering people's discounts. There's something wrong. It's a great diagnostic tool. If the D word comes to your lips, know that something's wrong with your product, something's wrong with your sales process, something's wrong with your target market. You got to figure it out. One more thing about the discounts, Dan, is you know in our product business, a lot of time it can be like the anti-sell, right? So we say, oh, we don't do we don't do discounts. Our products are that good, and people really get attracted to that kind of thing. Absolutely. Number ten, selling is just filling the gaps that marketing and distribution left. It's a sign that you aren't doing other things right. Wow. So, okay, now we're talking about the meta skill, but now we're saying if you feel like you're hustling on the phone in order to keep the business alive time and time and time again, then look to your marketing and distribution. Ideally, Ian, there's a relationship between classic hard sales and marketing. The better your marketing is, in other words, the better that you're training your target market to understand and to use and to appreciate your products, the less selling you have to do. Look, When's the last time you got hustled by someone with an Apple logo on their shirt? You know, you don't need to do that because people are coming there begging them to release the products in their direction. That's just good marketing. And that's what needs to happen in your business eventually. Yeah. And in terms of this uh, marketing and distribution, Dan, it's much cheaper too, because you just have to build it one or two times, right? So it's like I build my website one time and it sells for me hundreds and hundreds of times. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like picking up the phone and selling. Like that's one to one. Number eleven, overcoming objections and plowing. I gotta give a a little hat tip to Taylor Pearson for coming up with the plow. I mean, I think we've used it too, but I just love this idea of sometimes that's what it is. It's like you sit down and you say, I'm calling fifty people by eleven AM. And that's plowing and overcoming objections. People are trying to sell me on stuff all the time, boss man. All the time. All the time. Period after each word. You know what I do when people try to sell me? I always do the same thing. I object. I object to you trying to sell me something right now. And you know what happens to everybody? This is like a this is just basic arithmetic, boss man. 
anybody who's ever sold me on anything has overcome objections. And I think, you know, I see all too much of this people going away. They make the proposal, they go away. They make the propo- if, if your proposal has anything more than three figures attached to it, it might take you a few months with an M, the M word, man. It might take you a few months to get someone to say yes. So understand that, overcome the objections, continue to work, and plow on. That's how sales get done. And think about the objections, too, before they come up. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, think about all the, all the different scenarios that people are going to throw at you. Well, I don't want to buy that because I don't have the money because I don't like the color. You know, think about all these things beforehand, write them down, have a list, and then you'll be prepared to object to the objections. Right. Speaking of lists, number 12 is just ask the most basic questions. So if you're having a plow morning, so to speak, and you're going to call 50 prospects by 11 a.m., here's what I would do. I would write down between five and 10 questions, like a choose your own adventure. If they say certain things, you're going to omit certain questions, but that keeps it simple. And all you have to do is ask them the five most basic questions that brings out the information that you need to know about them in order to sell them the appropriate product. Number 13, good brands have legacy marketing value. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, and this is what I was talking about before, it's like once you create a piece of content or once you create some some kind of legacy content, it, it can continue to sell itself for years and years on end. It's like uh, Tim Ferriss, 4-Hour Workweek. We all read that book. How many people went out and bought the 4-Hour Chef just because they liked what Tim Ferriss wrote in the first book? I don't really care about any of the chef stuff, but I really, really like this guy, right? So he did a good job building his brand. He did a good job building trust. And now everybody went out and bought five of his other books, even if you didn't really care what he was talking about. Yeah, Authors do a very good job of building a legacy marketing value. Yeah, and I like how this, you also mentioned this idea of kind of like marketing anchoring where you're kind of anchoring your next product to a product that people already understand and know. Number 14, boss man, stories create sales. I like this. You wrote, nobody has any loyalty as to where they buy their next hard drive. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, and this uh, makes it very expensive to sell. Yeah, it's exactly. It's an interesting point. So, in other words, story is what can improve your margin, and a story is how humans work. Story is how we remember things. So, in other words, it's a less expensive way to sell is to generate a narrative as opposed to. It seems difficult, though. It's difficult from an emotional perspective to to tell a story about your product or to be willing to sell a product that has a story around it. It's a lot easier, I suppose, to go to China, get something cheap, and then just hustle all day long. It's just too expensive, Dan. Like I was saying, like I just don't think that that's a sustainable model. You know, like uh, when I wrote that point, I was looking at my Western Digital hard drive, and I thought, well, what made me decide to buy that Western Digital hard drive? Honestly, it probably came down to design for me and like looking at the specs. But that's not how a lot of people buy. Um, they'll buy off brand loyalty, or they'll buy from you know what their friends said. But generally, I'd say it's uh, there's got to be a story around it. You know, I was watching a video today. Actually, there's this company that's building high end hoodies. Have you? seen this company i think they're called like american something they're obviously ripping off american apparel but it's american whatever they had this beautiful youtube video and it told the story of like how they found the fabric and how they found these craftsmen to put it together and all this stuff is it's a 90 dollar hoodie it's a, it's the best hoodie in the world though and they built a great story around it and i almost hit the buy now button but wasn't that compelling yeah this is this is yuppie luxury you know it's like it, it 10, 10 15 years ago it was the gold plated cell phones and now you want to buy, you want the story, you want to eat the cornflakes that came from the field that was hand picked <laughs> by sustainable immigrants that are part of a tribe, <laughs> right. you know, whatever. <laughs> right. That's, hey, people love it, you know, whatever. Come up with some story that resonates with your target market. Of course, if you want to sell something to Boss Man, it better be hand picked by some tribal, some authentic tribal person. <laughs> I might go back and buy that sweatshirt. I'm telling you that right now. Number 15, we're going to skip. Number 16, is a great salesperson harder to find than a great developer? Probably. We often talk about that great developer as like the endangered species. It's the final pink panda bear or whatever. I don't know. Maybe it's, I think it's the sales guy, boss man. Yeah, I think I think it probably is in most in most cases. Number 17, all this sales talk makes you think about prospecting and going out and, and hunting on the open savanna for new leads. But we just want to remind ourselves and our audience that the best place to make sales is with your current customers, is going up the value chain. And I think about that, boss, man, when I look at the contractors that we work with, companies that we engage with, and I think, man, they could get so much more 
money to us. They could provide us so much more value. They're already there, you know? So they're already spending the time to, to call up me and put up my crap. Why don't they charge me more and deliver more? That's the best place to make more sales. Hey, ask my good friend uh, uh, and your good friend as well, Damian Thompson, for a couple tips. We've got three at the end, uh, sort of a, uh, a send off from Damian because he's a great sales guy and he's in the process of, of just hustling, being a samurai for his new business. I think he did 20 grand last month. Uh, last time he was on the show, he was doing seven grand. So obviously, something I was like, what's working, man? You're out there, you're selling on the web. What's working? Uh, the first point he said is, is, is do things that don't scale. And this is this Paul Graham article concept that you guys, uh, you talked about on the show as well, boss man. He was talking about personally replying to new email subscribers. This idea that it's going to be this funnel at the beginning. This concept of flipping the funnel upside down, boss man, I've heard about it on a few programs now. I think I heard about it on the Fizzle show. I heard about it on the Foolish Adventure show. We've done three or four episodes about flipping the funnel upside down. I think internet business people are starting to come to the internet and saying, wait a second, like all this crap that people were talking about the sales funnel, like that's for advanced level, like you've been in business for five to 10 years kind of crap. Like if you want to start an internet business, you flip the funnel upside down and that's what DT is doing. Do things that don't scale. Start with one customer. Speaking of not scaling, number 19 is cold email works. And I put that in bold face. Stop making freaking excuses and start prospecting. Cold email is more effective than calls because email isn't a disruptor. And you can test, measure, test, measure. This is the primary growth engine for Lynchpin 20K next month, buddy. What do you think about that? I, got, I love it. Yeah, you know, that's that's really interesting, actually, because uh, I would I would tend to disagree with that. But, you know, if Damien's, like, built the, his business on that, then wh- who am I to disagree about that? But, you know, I definitely do not open cold emails. I don't even open cold phone phone calls. I just hang right up on them. So none of that stuff works on me, Dan, but, you know, I'm stone cold. But uh, interesting. <laughs> I, I'd like to know more about how that works, Damien, because uh, uh, I, I thought like that, that that was over, like, five years ago. I love I love the comedy in like having a sense of pride about not being affected by sales tactics, you know? Like 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 the the old lady at Costco like gives you a sweet exactly. tart or something you're like, "Ah, oh, I know what you're doing. I'm not I'm not gonna, I don't even like that's not my brand of sweet tart. I'm not into that. <laughs> but thanks for the sweet tart." That's Anyways, great. I'm about to go buy that sweatshirt <laughs> after the <this> show, so. <laughs> but well, you know, I I mean I do need sweet tarts. I am out of sweet tarts. <laughs> <laughs> Number 20 from DC. Ignore the no free advice crowd. Even if you are a consultant selling ideas, you have to give to get. Drive people to a call, chat, give, give, give. Demonstrate your expertise and authority in 15 minutes by focusing on them, how to grow their biz, and the law of repro- reci- reciprocity is a magical thing. Thank you for bringing this up, Damien, because wow, so many, uh, uh, especially, you know, I- it's it's a this is like a blind leading the blind kind of thing, you know the ratio of things that you do that you don't invoice for. In other words, free work. The ratio of that as you continue on in your career will continue to go up in an in a quote negative way, right? So Richard Branson gives a lot more free value than the beginning level consultant and. Tim Ferriss gives a lot more free value than he invoices for. So in other words, this is not a ratio that you need to worry about. It's going to get worse. It's only going to get worse, and that's good for you. And I can't stand these blind leading the blind consultant guys who are like, make sure that you get what your time's worth and all this kind of crap. It just misses the point. And I feel like this is like an I am kind of thing where, you know, it's a little bit of blind leading blind. And and the reason I'm a little bit touchy about it is I hate to see the beginning level online marketing consultant making no money, no money's boss man, struggling, overpricing contracts, uh, making sure they get value for the time or whatever, and just having it be fall flat on, on their face. So, you know, look, you're going to have to give to get. Yeah, and I think the bottom line here, Dan, is uh, the reason why these guys uh, are able to give so much in the end, like Branson, like you mentioned, is because they've gotten so much in the past, you know? And so it's like, it doesn't have to be this one-to-one thing, especially like after your plane starts to take off and you have lift, it's, then it's then it's really time to start throwing around the champagne and partying and, and, and giving stuff away for people, you know? Because that's the thing to do. It creates goodwill and it makes people feel good and then they're going to spend the message for you. You know, I've talked to a, a consultant just the other week, Ian, who would not even was even concerned about mentioning to me the ways in which they were creating results for businesses you know it's like well kind of like that's kind of my pay level you know if i tell you that and i'm just thinking to myself you know like first off now i don't trust you so 
it, it's not like the moment that look I, I make cat furniture for a living but when you tell me your copywriting secret sauce technique it's not like i'm gonna jump up and become a, a, so, a copywriter secret sauce guy so the same guy that makes you uh, sign an nda oh, oh that's another rant for another day thanks dt for those tips uh if you guys want the point of this episode is just to get you thinking about if you're having trouble with your business right now, take it to the next level, whether you're at six and you want to go to seven figures, or whether you're in a job and you want to hit the road, uh, this is the place to start. You know, Ground zero is clearing, clearing the brush is clearing the debt. Personal debt, personal finance, that's ground zero. Go off to Dave Ramsey, you know, get personal money makeover, whatever. Once you get the brush cleared, laying the block, so to speak, is figuring out how to, set, how to sell stuff. I mean, I was just talking with another designer the other day. Designer was talking about starting a business based around their designs. And it was all about, you know, I understand the materials and I understand that, like, I've seen other people buy these kinds of things in the past. And, you know, it's interesting to think that I know nothing about these materials, boss man. I know nothing about this target market, but I know that I could start and succeed in that business within the next week. And I know that I could pre sell the product and I know exactly how I would go about that. And so it's this interesting thing of, like, you know, it's, it's this marriage of if you've got that skill set or knowledge, if you can if you can combine it with sales ability, that's gonna be the cocktail that jump starts a business. So in other words, they had this marketable skill set and everything, but it was the lack of sca- sales ability that's keeping them out of business. And that's generally the case. It could be the case, you know, I mean Maybe not the case going to six to seven figures might could be more about process and organization and stuff. It depends on the situation. But certainly from sitting in a cubicle or month to month, hand to mouth or, or noodles to mouth or whatever if you're in Thailand, it's probably sales is where your problem is. So you know, don't stop with this episode. Go out and educate yourself any way you can. We'll have a lot of links to how you can do that, tropicalmba.com slash sales. We're going to have links to our favorite sales books. Woo. Sound good? Yeah, I hope, that wow. was, uh, I hope that was helpful, Dan. I mean, that was a lot of information in a small amount of time. Maybe next time we just pick five points and uh, hammer on them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some rapid reviews. Boss man, spin it. What you got? Oh, coming back to my, my new old favorite, Mr. Action Bronson. Can't get enough of this guy. Mm. This is Buddy Guy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bronsolino, yeah. Hey, yo. Hey, as a counterpart to that one-star review, hey guys, I just wanted to say that I heard about that one-star review complaining too much about the DC this and DC that. I listened to your podcast for a long time and I really appreciate about what you, what's going on with the DC. I'm working hard to get my first location business off the ground and I can't wait to join your ranks when I start getting revenues in the door. Screw that one-star guy. Best Andy. Thank you. Hey, by the way, Andy sent this from his iPhone. What do you think about that tag, boss man? You think it's cool to say sent to my iPhone? You know, I don't think anybody. No, I don't think people do that anymore. And uh, I don't appreciate like watch for the spelling errors. I'm sorry, any of this shit. Just like check your spelling, make sure it's right. I don't need to know. It's not my problem that you send like, it from your iPhone. Andy's got our Andy's got our backs, and then you just pick busy. Out and I think that's the anti cell So Andy knows that you're not a bullshit in that boss man, even though Andy was saying something nice to you. You just come back over the top and say something mean to him. That's how you look. Look, I'm just, I'm just giving to him straight. I appreciate everything that he wrote in his email. Okay, okay, okay. He brought up the I iPhone said, thing. I, I got to tell the truth that, about that. All right. I'm a truth seeker. <laughs> All right. Sam wrote us. We'll have a, a, a link to Sam's website and photo. You got to check out the photo of this boss, man. Uh, I wanted to show off my entrepreneur mobile equipped because it isn't your typical vehicle at all. In fact, it's not even a vehicle. A few months ago when my wife and I realized that working for ourselves is really what we wanted, the punchline is boss man, they went and they got a mobile home in the deserts a few miles north of Las Vegas. How crazy is that? Our monthly housing payment will go from the 1200 we were paying in Vegas to $150 monthly. Uh, my, thousand, my thousand days is up, but I'm asking for a short extension to 1400 days. You got it, Sam. This is an incredible, hey, like I'll do whatever it takes move. I don't care about keeping up with the Joneses or anybody for that matter. I'm going to do my own thing. Hey, I'm always inspired and I get confidence myself whenever I see anybody 
doing their own thing, going after what they want in life. That's what pumps me up. Again, Dan, I think with Michael that called in earlier and with Sam, you know, go to the blog, like, look at this photo. Like, lose your ego, friends. Like, if you want to start a business, like, look what Sam is giving up to make this happen. Like, this is how hungry this MFer is. And he's really going to make it work. And that is super inspiring. Now we got a bunch of MFers in this episode. DigitalNomadStartup.com writes, if you have not come across their podcast yet, Drop what you were doing after reading this and do yourself a favor. Tune into this delightfully entertaining, badass mix of wit, banter, grit, cheek, and humor with tons of insider tips, tricks, and essential habits to cultivate your rise to freedom. iTunes review the Jordan and Pimpin of podcasts. These guys are Hall of Famers. They've been to the playoffs. They've won it all. And now they're raining down veteran nuggets to help us rookies develop our game. If you're not listening to this podcast, then you're going to end up like Carl Malone and never get a win or a ring. That's hilarious. Thanks for helping me take my business to the next level. John at smashballoon.com. Joe D.H. from the United States of America, currently not under martial law. At least that's what the newspapers are saying. Entertaining and inspiring. Five stars. Great show. Love how Dan and Ian think differently about home ownership and other financial and lifestyle decisions that Americans make without second guessing. They use a lot of fun metaphors, one of which is long ball. Not sure what that means, soccer, baseball, or something else, but would love an explanation. Okay, I thought about this, boss man, and, and I have no idea what long ball means. Actually, this is true. Long ball technically is a thing that happens in a soccer game, but that's not what we're referring to. What we're actually referring to, and we do this a lot, boss man, we make up our own crap. That's what we do, man. Long ball is basically long game, and, and game and ball are syn- synonyms. Or they're not direct synonyms, right? But they're, they're kind of you, so exactly. <laughs> Obviously, we're confused on this. The, but it's the like the point it's like, is that Joe asked a great man, question. Joe asked a great question. In other words, <laughs> long game. That's what we need. Long game. Finally, long game. Finally, from Brian at IncomeSurfer.com. Dan and Ian, thank you for releasing the Tropical NBA podcast every Thursday. Yes, uh, we've been able to do that for you lately. So that hasn't always been that way. I'm in my early 30s, and I've been interested in business and investing since my early teens. Currently. I'm helping to turn around a 14-person nursery tree farm business. I published my adventures in business and investing at IncomeSurfer.com. Anyways, your money's episode was the best one. Too many people buy houses or invest in stocks because it's what they believe they should do, not because it's what's best for them at the current time. I also utilize the war chest method of investing. It has served me well so far. I must say we're in good company with Warren Buffett, Mark Cuban, exercising the same approach. Now, if we were only getting their returns, yes, I agree, Brian. My next favorite episode was the 10 Ways to Cut a Crappy Deal episode. Thank you. I like that one too. While I have dodged most of those landmines, I really appreciate you guys with all the experience to us listeners. Although our businesses are different, you two give me some new ideas and leave me feeling motivated. Thanks for all your ideas and efforts. And Dan, that is the name of the game, buddy. We are not all selling valet podiums and cat products, but a lot of this information is transferable. So I'm happy to have you with us, Brian. Thank you for all your reviews. And emails, love getting into that stuff. Hey, you know, I know Matt called into the voicemail line expecting to get some direct feedback, and we kind of sidestepped the issue. I just want to say, Matt, you know, let's keep the conversation going, actually, Matt. Let let us know if anything that you heard in this episode directly changed the approach that you're going to take on that page. I mean, maybe what we're talking about here, Matt, is, okay, the page is cool. Now, what's your cold email strategy? Who have you talked to in the last few? So, in other words, the page is... Okay, but there's a lot more things that you can be doing to see if you can sell this product. Let's hear about those. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can make this thing a success. If you want to follow up on all the links in this episode, follow, check out what Matt's site currently looks like and check out all the resources on how you can uh, become a sales samurai. Check out tropicalmba.com slash sales. And that'll be it for this week, boss man. I got a plane to catch. We'll see you guys next Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tropical MBA podcast. You can go to tropicalmba.com, get access to hundreds of back episodes and all kinds of other goodies. Load up your iPod. That is the cheapest way to fly business class on your next international flight. We will see you next Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.